Hey there, it's John from the Red Dice Diaries RPG podcast. We had a bit of a busy weekend, so we've not recorded ahead quite as much as we would have liked, leading to our Monday episode going out a bit later. Now, Hannah's still at work at the moment. I've just finished for the day, and I thought I'd take the time to put out a quick episode talking about an idea that I've had bubbling up in my mind. So as some of you may be aware, I've recently been running a Midlands game using the ICRPG system by Rune Hammer Games, which is a sort of adaption of D&D, and I've been very much enjoying that. In the last session, our heroes, who had narrowly escaped being killed by a group of juvenile ogres, tracked the trails of these ogres back to their lair and decided they were going to go into the ogre lair, deal with what was there, before continuing their main mission. Alas, that's not really how it turned out, since there were another three of these juvenile ogres and their two parents in the lair, who, combined with some bad luck on the hero's behalf, gave them a bit of a thrashing. And we pretty much ended with a TPK scenario. Everyone was down and either unconscious or bleeding to death at the end of the session. Now, because... I didn't want it to go out like that. I suppose I wanted it to go out with a bit of a bang, but I didn't really want to fudge things too much because I think there should be consequences for sort of ill-advised plans and stuff like that. What I decided to do was have it so that the next session we do, which is going to be in a week's time, the heroes are going to wake up on a sacrificial altar to the ogre's pagan gods. And I'm basically going to make each of them make a constitution roll. Those who fail are going to start with like a very small amount of hit points. They're going to be missing most of their equipment, all of them. And those who succeed on the constitution roll are going to have a handful more hit points. So they are going to be in a really desperate situation. And the difficulty of the situation... So because ICRPG gives like a standard difficulty rating for a location that all roles are based on, that is going to be pretty high. So chances are that most of them are still going to perish, which I think is only right and proper because that's how it would have gone down if I was being a proper stickler for the roles. But they get a chance to go out with a sort of final farewell, you know, one last chance to like stick it to these ogres before they get killed on the sacrificial stone. And I like that a bit, you know, Fair enough, they're heroes. I like to give them a decent heroic way out, so that's grand. One thing it has got me thinking about, though, is what game I would like to run next. Now, obviously, I'm a massive fan of Old School Essentials. I've talked about it a lot. It's a a reorganisation of basic D&D, and I'm a really big fan of that. I've also been talking to Pete Jones, who's one of the hosts on Purple Worm Podcast with me, who was saying that the Foundry Virtual Tabletop, there are currently some people working on a a compendium which is going to have the rules from the SRD from Old School Essentials in it and I've been really looking forward to running stuff using Foundry VTT so that sort of ties in nicely with it and it's really making me want to run some Old School Essentials however one thing I would like to do which I've not done for a while I'm starting to get a bit of a Jones for that whole idea of world building now in most of my recent games I've used the Midlands campaign setting by Glyn Seal of Monkey Blood Design and also Dolman Wood by Gavin Norman of Necrotic Mo. and those two campaign settings are really great there's fairy tale weirdness from the Dolman Ward, and there's tongue in cheek, sort of Blackadder esque, medieval faux British humour in the Midlands. All of which I love. Please don't think I'm casting any shade on those two campaign settings. I really do love them. However, I have started to wonder recently whether I've maybe got a little bit lazy when it comes to GMing, you know, falling back on sort of very comfortable and very familiar sort of settings and campaign tropes. And this was in part spurred by my recent conversation with my wife Hannah on the last episode of the podcast when we were talking about stat generation methods, where I was saying that if you can create the characters you want in a game, you tend to fall back on sort of comfortable types of characters that you play often, particularly in like a class system like D&D or something like that. And I was saying how I think it's a good idea to use random stats because 
often you don't get the sort of optimal stats for that particular type of character so it can force you to step outside your comfort zone and maybe play something a bit different and in the process you might discover something that you enjoy a bit more or just have a bit of a different experience and i'm wondering whether the fact that i've not tried doing any world creation for a while beyond a few bits and pieces here and there for my own gratification has led to me getting a bit too comfortable with just plucking an osr setting and like i said there's nothing wrong with that if you love osr settings crack on led to me plucking them off the shelves and just sort of running with what's familiar to me rather than actually trying to create my own setting and now i love those tales of people who've created their own game world they've been running campaigns in it for giggity years since god was a boy and they've got mythologies built up and stuff like that my friend rob davis he's created a campaign world that he runs most of his games in and there's different areas every time he runs a new game as far as i'm led to believe unless it's changed since i spoke to him about it he picks a different area of the campaign world so each time he runs a game he's expanding that campaign world but hand in hand with that and my love of world building also goes the fact that i like hex crawls and i like games where the world emerges as you actually play the game so at the moment i'm thinking about potentially i might like to run something old school essentials after my current game has wrapped up assuming it doesn't they don't all manage to survive but i find myself thinking should I actually just go with a, a world that I'm familiar with or should I create a campaign world? And if I'm going to create a campaign world, how far shall I go with that? Shall I detail out a load of it at the start? So the sort of top down approach or should I work from the bottom up hex crawl styly and let the world develop through play? And I thought, what's the point having a podcast if I can't throw suggestions like this out to the audience? and get a little bit of listener input so i've got to put the question to you guys out there if you're when you're starting to play like a DD game or something like that how much is world building a part of that process for you and if you do start decide to start developing your own world how much detail do you put into it at the start or are you more of a sort of let things develop through play gm and do you design your worlds with recurring use in mind when you start creating a world do you think oh yes i'm going to create this world one that's going to keep my interest for multiple campaigns or do you just create a world for a single campaign and then move on to something else afterwards i'm genuinely interested to hear what people have got to say on this subject and also if you've got any great world making resources or anything like that that you think might be useful to me please do send me some details i know there's a few things i use that i really like like um welsh piper's website for like hex crawls things like that but please feel free to send in any resources that you think i might find useful so thank you very much for listening to this episode as i say if you've got any suggestions or opinions on world building and campaigns please do not hesitate to get in touch you can leave us a voicemail message using speakpipe there's a link in the description of this show or you can send us an email to rddrpgpodcast at gmail.com until i see you next time take care stay safe and keep gaming mm-hmm.